Hello students, in today's lecture, we will discuss about the development of thyroid gland. Now, it is a very important question for your exam purpose. So, how to write down this question in your exam? So, the first point is about introduction, what you have to write down that this is the first endocrine gland. Now, this is the first point that it is a first endocrine gland which develop in the embryo. The second point is that this gland start its development on 24th day of intrauterine life and its functioning starts on the 12th week of your life. Clear? So, when the its development start, answer is on 24th day. And when will the functioning will start, answer is on the 12th week of your embryonic life. Clear? Now, what are the sources of the development? Now, my dear students, you have to keep this thing in mind that this thyroid gland is endodermal in origin. Why? Because whenever you are reading the development of thyroid, the thyroid gland develops from the pharyngeal pouches. And we know that pouch means the endodermal lining. So, this gland is endodermal in origin. But when we are talking about the sources, there are two sources. One is endoderm of your primitive pharynx and second thing is ultimobranchial bodies. And you know that when you are reading the uh, fate of your pouches, we know that the fourth and the fifth pouch will join to form ultimobranchial body. And dear students, later on the neural crest cells invaginate these ultimobranchial body and that's why the neural crest cells is going to form your parafollicular cells of thyroid gland. Now, we will talk about stages of development. So, when you will see the stages of development, the first stage is that when there is a 24th day of the life is there, what will happen that the endoderm cell proliferate between the tuberculum impar and copula. Now, what is this? When you will see the formation of the tongue, you know that this is the first pharyngeal arch area inside which is lined by your endoderm. Now, here initially you will have the formation of the two swellings which are known as lateral lingual swellings and in the same first pharyngeal arch area, you will have one more swelling which will form here is known as tuberculum impar. Now, this is your second arch area. Now, here you will have one more swelling is formed which is known as copula. Now, between this copula and the tuberculum impar, what will happen in this area, you have a small depression is known as foramen cecum. So, my dear students, what is foramen cecum? Actually, what will happen that in the tongue, in this area of primitive pharynx or you can see in the developing tongue, first there is a formation of a thickening which is known as primordium thyroid. Now, this primordium thyroid appears on the 24th day and after that what will happen? From this primordial mm, thyroid, there is a formation of a depression which is known as diverticulum. And this diverticulum later on elongate into the downward direction. So, this diverticulum is having a opening into the developing pharynx or in the tongue and that area is persist as a foramen cecum. So, when you are writing the development stage by stage, first there is a formation of a proliferated area between the two swellings which are known as tuberculum impar and copula and this from this swelling there is a formation of a diverticulum. This diverticulum will elongate and this elongate diverticulum is going to form your thyroglossal duct and the its site of this invagination into the tongue is known as foramen cecum. Now, next what will happen that when you will go down, now this is your duct which is going down and this tip of the duct is going to proliferate and when it will proliferate, it will then later on bifurcate into the right and left part, clear? But the important thing is when it is going down, it is crossing the structures anteriorly. That means it lies anterior to your developing hyoid bone, it lies anterior to your developing laryngeal cartilages. So, when the duct is growing downward into the neck and midline, now this midline word is important and later on what will happen? It crosses anterior to the pharyngeal part of the developing gut, developing hyoid bone and developing laryngeal cartilages. Now, once it will reach into the neck in lower part, 
this tip of the duct bifurcate and the cells will proliferate and these cells those will proliferate here is going to form your two lobes and the isthmus of thyroid gland. So ultimately what will happen by the end of seventh week now the gland will uh, reach to its final destination that means it will achieve its position on second to fifth tracheal ring area clear. So what is the stages? So stages starts from the appearance of a thyroid primordium and this primordium appears between the two swellings which are known as tuberculum impar and copula. From this thyroid primordium there is a formation of a diverticulum. This diverticulum elongate to form the duct. The opening or internal site of this diverticulum is known as foramen cecum. Then this duct will cross anterior to the developing part of your pharyngeal gut then developing hyoid bone and the cartilages, then the tip will show the proliferation and bifurcation to form the two lobes of the gland and the isthmus and then what will happen? The gland receive its final position by the seventh week of intrauterine life. Now what is the future of this duct? Now when you are writing the future or the fate of the thyroglossal duct, you realize that the duct will disappear. So this part of the duct will disappear except sometimes this is most distal portion of the duct persist as a pyramidal lobe in 50 percent of the people. So when you are writing the fate of the duct you have to understand this thing that the lumen is also lost and the complete duct degenerates except in the 50 percent cases its distal part persists as a pyramidal lobe. So when you will have the adult position of your thyroid gland you know that sometimes there is a median lobe or a pyramidal lobe is persist and this lobe is remain connected with the isthmus of the thyroid gland. Now the next thing comes about the histogenesis of the gland when you are talking about the formation of the cells of the thyroid gland. So when you are talking about the cells you have the thyroid follicles and these thyroid follicles are responsible for the secretion of your thyroxine hormones and it is filled with the colloid material. So the lining of thyroid follicles comes from the endoderm. So these endodermal cells which are forming the lobes will proliferate and they will show the formation of thyroid follicles. But there is a very special kind of cells present in the thyroid gland and these cells are known as C cells or parafollicular cells. Now these C cells or parafollicular cells develop from the ultimobranchial body. But dear students you have to keep this thing in mind that these ultimobranchial bodies which arises from the endoderm of fourth and fifth arches later on invaded by the neural crest cells. So the neural crest cells basically responsible to form these parafollicular cells or the C cells which are responsible to maintain the calcium homeostasis in an individual. Clear? So if you are writing the histogenesis or the cells of the thyroid gland, there are two sources: endodermal and one is ultimobranchial body which is an endodermal mass. But the neural crest cells which invaded into the ultimobranchial body is going to form your parafollicular cells. Now at the end you have to write down the anomalies. There are three types of the anomaly. One is known as ectopic thyroid gland. Second is ectopic thyroid tissue and third is thyroglossal duct cyst. Now what is the difference between the ectopic thyroid gland and ectopic thyroid tissue? Now my dear students what will happen when your duct is descending down from the foramen cecum into your neck in midline, what will happen later on? This part it disappear. But what will happen? This descent will not achieve up to the normal level. If this part will remain undescended but it remain in midline, what will happen? That the gland will develop here. If it will go little bit more, then the gland will develop here. It will go or more than the gland will develop here. That means suppose this is the definitive site but the gland is not developing here, it may develop in these areas. But what are these areas? These areas are lies in a normal pathway of thyroglossal duct. So here in this diagram if you will see this is your point of foramen cecum. Now if the diverticulum develops here only in the gland then it is known as lingual gland. And once the duct will pass through the substance of the tongue and if it develops here then it is known as intralingual part of the gland. 
If it comes out and lies just above the hyoid bone, it is known as suprahyoid. If it goes down, it is known as infrahyoid. And sometimes the duct is so long that it enters into the anterior part of your mediastinum, which is known as intrathoracic part of thyroid gland. So, when you are talking about ectopic thyroid gland, you have to understand the definition that ectopic thyroid gland means when the gland develops in the normal pathway of thyroglossal duct in midline. Clear? And which is the most common ectopic thyroid gland position out of all of these? Answer is lingual thyroids. So, lingual thyroids are the most common variety of ectopic thyroid gland. Now, what is ectopic thyroid tissue? Now, ectopic thyroid tissue means the thyroid tissue which is present in other parts of the body other than the normal tissue. You have the normal thyroid gland, but apart from this thyroid gland, the tissue is present in any other part of the body like larynx, like trachea, like esophagus, like ovaries or pericardium. So, in these areas, if the thyroid tissue is present, it is ectopic thyroid tissue. Now, the last applied is thyroglossal duct cyst. Now, thyroglossal duct cyst is again a cyst which is present in the midline in the neck. So, what will happen normally the thyroglossal duct we know it disappears. But if the part of the duct persists or if there is a remnant of the duct which is present anywhere along the course of thyroglossal duct then it is known as thyroglossal cyst. And you know that thyroglossal duct is a midline structure. So, this cyst always present in the midline and it lies in an anterior part of the neck. Now, this thyroglossal cyst is highly movable and it moves with the deglutition. It is a painless and it is progressively enlarges. Now, when you will see the thyroglossal cyst, if it is get infected, then it opens externally, then it is known as thyroglossal fistula or sinus. Clear? So, when you are writing the short note on the, on the development of thyroid gland, what you have to write down? So, let us revise it again. First, you have to start with the introduction where you have to write down the three point. The first point is that this gland is a first gland to develop in the embryo. Second, its development start on the 24th day and functioning, functioning start on the 12th week. Third, you have to write down that this gland originate from the uh, first and second pharyngeal pouches that means it is endodermal in origin. Second point is the source and the source you have to write down two point first endoderm of the pharyngeal pouch and second neural crest cells which has been invaginated into the ultimobranchial body. Then you have to write down the steps of the development first there is a formation of the primordial thyroid that means there is a proliferation occurs between the uh, tuberculum impar and copula then the uh, from this area there is a formation of a diverticulum diverticulum elongates to form the duct the duct is known as thyroglossal duct and its upper part or the point of invagination is known as foramen cecum then what will happen that this duct crosses the midline structures like pharyngeal part of the gut developing hyoid bone and uh, laryngeal cartilages. So, it lies anterior to all these structure. Ultimately, the lower end of the duct bifurcates and this bifurcated part is going to form your right and left lobe along with the isthmus. Then at the seventh week, it will receive its definitive position. Now, the thyroglossal duct future, that means you have to write down the fate of the duct. So, here you have to write that thyroglossal duct disappears or degenerates. But in 50% of the people, the distal most part of the duct persists as a pyramidal lobe which is remain connected with your isthmus. Then when you will talk about the cells or histogenesis of the thyroid gland, the parafollicular cells are important to write here that they are developing from the neural crest cells which has been invaded into the ultimobranchial body and the thyroid follicles which develop from the endoderm. Then you have to write down the anomalies in a three part. One is ectopic thyroid gland. Ectopic thyroid gland defined as a gland which develops in a normal pathway of thyroglossal duct. Uh, in this category, the lingual thyroids are the most common variety of ectopic thyroid gland. Now, what is ectopic thyroid tissue? Ectopic thyroid tissue is a tissue which is present anywhere in the body except the normal thyroid gland tissue. Now, what is the site of ectopic thyroid? 
tissue answer is your larynx trachea esophagus pericardium and ovaries then the last you have to write down the thyroglossal duct cyst the cyst is again formed into the pathway of thyroglossal duct and it is a midline structure it is formed by the remnants of the duct it is a painless it is movable and it is gradually or progressively enlarged cyst clear and if the cyst will get infected it will convert into the fistula so my dear students now at the end of this session you have the idea about the development of the thyroid gland and the most important thing is how to attempt this question in your exam thank you